stays with her. It doesn't go anywhere. So I think that's uh, a very big thing. Again, the trust. Admire I admire a person or uh, her qualities or whatever. She says, the person who listens to her instruct again, she sings right along lightly for us. So she was like this. Uh, so she was like this. Uh, so she was like this. 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 She was like Sort of <coughs> and we want to tolerance. Complete obedience. Tolerance. 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 I don't think she meant tolerance. But I mean tolerance. Trust. Something similar to trust, but it's not tolerance. Tolerance is something totally different. Uh, oh, yes. The further the building upon what she, what she said, it's, it's what, open, uh, are you, have you got somebody in your mind whom you admire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He's an what, A level, what is the strongest a, a, he's quality? An a level coordinator uh -huh. at one of the, in the schools. Uh, he's open to the ideas given uh, to him by the teachers. So, uh, if if there is a good idea which the teacher thinks would work in the organization, and he brings that idea up to that person, he would think about it, and then he, he's flexible enough to change a few of the things in his mind. So he has this, his flexibility in the, in, the work he, in, the, in the way he works. So yeah. that is very good for the whole organization because the systems, they, they, they can then evolve over a period of time. Because... Flexibility yeah. of response, of listening and being flexible in response, right? Thank you. Yes, you wanted to say something? Yeah. 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 You don't need to be that specific. Just mention or somebody in a meeting. Yeah, and I admire the empowerment that I feel. How is how? Can you give an example of a power? Empowerment basically something which which she and he did to empower somebody. Can you give me a case and an example? Yeah, I mean, if I was I'm a department head, I'm like I can certainly take certain decisions for my department, and then I take it with the Uh, I can think of somebody uh, who was uh, basically uh, the head of the organization. That's fine. Uh, what what was what is really what am I? I think he was a visionary, right. and at the same time was very good at empathizing. Right. And I think definitely made a lot of difference in people's lives.
junior staff, and every single person. I mean, she even knew the names of all, and she was uh, uh, she was heading the whole chapter. And she was so many Thank you. Thank you. So we. Thank you. That's that. I mean. We don't have stamps for big jobs, have we? <laughs> oh, okay. That's fine. Thank you. No problem. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, so, certain qualities which have come up, uh, what you really admire in, in a pair. Uh, obviously, there will be many more. I haven't asked everybody. Obviously, there will be a lot more. But certain things which have strongly come forward. One is trust, that the head should trust the body. And that, in a way, I mean, you distribute responsibilities to people you trust. Mm -hmm. So that, that is really an important element in distributing leadership. Obviously there will be issues, who you are trusting and who not, and then personal relationships come into that, and that's another aspect, interpersonal relations, which are extremely significant now in the leadership context. How are those interpersonal relations being handled? Are they interpersonal or are they very, very personal? When they become very, very personal, then they can, there is potential that they might become biased. So we have to be careful how those interpersonal relations are being inter in enacted. Uh, listening, very important, very significant aspect again. If you are not uh, open to listening, and listening means patiently listening, letting the person finish what they are saying, listening to them, giving them the right to have an opinion. That is really, when we talk about democracy in educational institutions, see, it doesn't mean democracy, it doesn't mean that what everyone says, you do that. You can't. It's not possible within an educational context to do everything that everyone wishes. Democracy is listen to everyone, give everyone an opportunity to say the thing, then make a decision among yourselves and explain why you are doing that particular thing, are acting on that particular thing which you have decided is the best, and why you are rejecting the others, the other opinions. For example, say in a meeting you get ten different opinions on a particular issue. You pick one. You have a it's not anti-democracy. You are not being dictatorial in picking one. You are picking one for the sake of efficiency. Because you have to perform. You have to take a step forward. You can't sit there deciding between ten. Well, this is good, this is good, this is good, this is good. No, that's wasting time. You can't. Today, headship, our leadership doesn't allow that. We are talking about institutional headship. It doesn't allow that sort of jiffering that you should sit there thinking about things. You have to make a decision. Decision making is a very important factor in the but you should at the same time be capable of explaining why you think that thing is, the decision that you have taken is the right decision, and why you think that it is better than others. Other decisions, may, other opinions may not be wrong, but the one that you have chosen, why is it better than others? And that is, that is democracy. Justifying this one thing is better. But generally, we think democracy means that only one thing is good and the rest is our bad and good, it's not. Everything has some potential, but in the circumstances, one opinion that we finally choose in team work, that we have an argument that this is the best solution for best decision. Another thing which has come up is obeying, I mean, doing everything that the leader tells, and our leader tells in a way that you like to do that. That has an aspect of charismatic leadership. You might have heard about that. Some people have this sort of charisma that whatever they say, Listen, they're just sort of taken in into that. It might work in a positive way, it can work in a negative way as well. Uh, see, Hitler also had huge charisma. People who listen to that small man, they just make people obey. But it, it differs. It, 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 there is potential in it to be used in any way. But to have that sort of impact on people, that they are prepared to obey means that there is some sort of strength and conviction in what you are saying. But a more balancing thing will be that you can prove that arguing to others that this is the reason. And you should also, before totally doing that, I would rather suggest critically look at that, that yes, I think this person is generally right and has a good perception and good decision making abilities. But why am I obeying this particular decision? You see, it's not just for some, uh, sometimes we <laughs> encourage bad leaders just by blindly obeying them. And I think we are equally to be blamed for bad leadership. You see, again, going back to the Quran, you see, there is that 
leaders are given to the nation that they deserve. Right? So just just remember that. That yes, we 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 shouldn't be unduly critical. And if we should give space to the leaders to perform because if we are always criticizing them, they will have no place to exercise to operate. I mean they will be coping with your criticism rather than moving forward. So don't be negative in your criticism. But at the same time, if you think something is not right, explain it with evidence. Why do you think this doesn't need to be done? And what is the other better way? And always when you're criticizing, give another option. I mean, it's very easy to critique that this what you are doing is wrong, but tell me the right way of doing it. That is the positive. I accept whatever I am doing is wrong, but tell me the right way of doing it, and I will accept it. Because if we just keep criticizing, we can't move on. Another thing which has come forward is flexibility, definitely. I will not go in much detail on our things, but I will just, I'll just sort of, just making you sort of think, I am sure you have, I have been thinking about these things. But just bringing them back to your mind. Trust and flexibility is almost similar to what we have talked about earlier. Empowerment is again, up, so to some extent, linked with trusting others, but that also means giving people their rights. Acknowledging that they have a right to perform in a particular way. Uh, acknowledging their rights, acknowledging their domain that in this they have a right to operate. And another important thing which I would rather like to talk about is two more things. Communication. I think it's very, very important. Communicating among the team, and that is a very essential aspect of the student leadership. Student leadership cannot function if there is not communication among those who are sharing leadership. Because there can be misunderstandings, there can be distrust. You can have, you may not, somebody might be doing something with sincerely right efforts, but because of miscommunication, you may be skeptical about it. So, it is very important, and as I said, interpersonal relations are significant, but you should be very judicious, very fair in your interpersonal relations. Professional need is professional, and professional interpersonal relations are different from personal relations, and you should never let the two interfere with each other. Which is a bit hard, I accept and I admit, but then, that is being a professional person. And another thing is, which is team spirit, which is very much linked to the distributed leadership, and more importantly, appreciating people for their contributions. As I said earlier also, it's very, very important to appreciate people, and here the, the, the colleague mentioned that appreciate